Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Incident Response Concepts. Today we're going to talk about first responder responsibilities, and then we're going to conclude with some incident response procedures and concepts. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing first responder responsibilities. The first responder to a security incident has two main responsibilities. First, to assess the situation, and second, to contain the damage. When responding to an incident, the first item to evaluate is the overall situation. To do this, the first responder needs to judge how widespread the incident is. It may involve a single system or it may involve multiple PCs. It could even possibly involve an entire department. The second main responsibility of the first responder is to isolate the incident and contain the damage. In most cases, this can be effectively achieved by removing the affected system from the network. This can be done by unplugging the network cable from that unit. If the damage is more widespread, it may be necessary to power down a network switch or other network device in order to contain the damage. But the first responder does need to make sure that that damage is contained and doesn't spread any farther. Let's discuss incident response procedures and concepts. First up is preparation. A security response team should be created by an organization before an incident ever occurs. The organization should be educated as to how everyone needs to respond to a security incident and how the response is to be conducted. Then there's incident identification. Every member of the response team should be capable of identifying a security incident. All members of the organization should be educated in how to identify a security incident. In many cases, it is the help desk personnel in an organization that will first recognize that an incident might be occurring. Then there are escalation and notification procedures. Once a security incident has been identified, the incident response team should be notified. All personnel should know how to contact the security response team. Then there are mitigation steps. After containing the incident, security response personnel will identify steps required to mitigate the situation. The steps may be as simple as requiring an antivirus software package to be updated, or the mitigation may be more complex, possibly installing a new firewall or a different security appliance. Once the security incident has been resolved successfully, a lessons learned report needs to be created. This documents what has occurred and how it was handled in order to help prevent the same situation from happening in the future. The lessons learned report should contain how the security incident happened, how did it get resolved, and how effective was that resolution. It should also contain a section on how can a similar occurrence be prevented in the future. The lessons learned report will be included in the final reporting documents. These reporting documents are used to educate and train the security response team for future incidences. They can also be used to educate and train end users on best practices to keep that security incident from occurring again. All incident response teams should have recovery and reconstitution procedures in place. These define how the system or systems are going to be returned to the state that they were in before the security incident occurred. First responders are responsible for isolating the incident. This means to quarantine or remove the affected device or devices to reduce the opportunity for more damage to occur, which leads to damage and loss control. Always identify the extent of the damage to help ensure that it is contained to only the affected systems. And finally, there's the concept of a data breach. A data breach is any time that sensitive data is made available to an untrusted source. Extremely sensitive data should never be allowed on the network. It should always be kept in offline storage. In all cases, sensitive data should always be encrypted. 
That concludes this session on incident response concepts. I began by talking about first responder responsibilities, and then I concluded with a brief discussion on incident response procedures and concepts. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to create another one soon.